Hello, I'm Colin Daly of Campbell Scientific in Logan, Utah. In this video, we'll show you how to get started using RTMC, real-time monitoring and control software. RTMC is included in our LogRNet, LogRNet Admin, LogRNet Data, and RTDAC software. It graphically displays data, changes variables or input locations, and toggles ports and flags. RTMC can combine data from multiple data loggers on a single display. As LoggerNet collects data from the data loggers, the displays in RTMC are automatically updated. RTMC displays data from LoggerNet's binary data cache, not from a collected data file. Data must be collected from the data logger for the data cache to be updated and therefore for RTMC displays to be updated. Typically, this is done by setting up a schedule in LoggerNet's setup window. RTMC Pro, that I'll be showing in another tutorial, can display data from additional sources, such as stored data files. Let's get started. From LoggerNet's toolbar, select the main category and Setup. Select the data logger you'll be displaying the data from. Select the Schedule tab. Put a check in the Schedule Collection Enable box. Next, you'll need to set up a collection interval. There are several things to consider. How often are you taking measurements and storing data? How often do you need the data display updated? What's your communications method? If you're on an expensive communications link, you'll likely be collecting data and updating your RTMC screens much less frequently than someone on a direct connect. We're on a direct connect here, and we want to have our screens updated in near real time. My program takes measurements every second, so I'll set the scheduled collection interval also to one second. Next, we'll go to the Data Files tab. You can see that our stored data tables, by default, are included for schedule collection. They have a green check in front of them, and the included for schedule collection box is checked. The public table, however, needs to be included if you want to display real-time or near real-time values. Make sure you apply any changes made to the network setup. Here's a helpful hint. If you ever get the message that the network is locked, it usually means that there are changes in the setup screen that need to be either applied or canceled. We're done with the setup screen and setting up schedule collection. Next, we'll launch the development mode of RTMC. My instance of LoggerNet also has RTMC Pro. In this tutorial, we'll use the standard version. Look for another tutorial where I'll demonstrate some of the features available in Pro. In this project, we'll place several different components on the screen, a thermometer, text, numeric data values, a chart of data, and an alarm. I'll end up with something like this. You, of course, can get quite a bit more creative. Our first graphical component will be a thermometer. Click in the workspace to place the component. RTMC is a click and click program, not a drag and drop. The properties box for that component is displayed. First, select what data you want this component to display. All the data loggers in your network are available. I'll select the CR1000 that we just set up on schedule collection. Here you see which tables are being collected on a schedule. They have the green check. Remember we set this up in the setup screen. Since the thermometer will display real-time values, I'll select the air temperature measurement from the public table. There are several component properties that you can change to get the look you're after. Notice that as you make changes, they are reflected on the component in the workspace. Components can be resized by dragging a handle. Once a component is added, you can double-click it to bring up its properties box again for further editing. Right-clicking also lets you open the component's properties. Next, let's add a label. Place it in the workspace and edit. Now we'll add a digital display to show the numeric value of the air temperature that is displayed on the thermometer. Remember, that is coming from the public table. Here's a little hint. Press Alt-248 to get the degree symbol. There are tools to help you get the components organized on your screen. Once several components are selected, the alignment, 
spacing, sizing, centering, and ordering tools all become available. The ordering tools are particularly useful when layering images and transparent components. We'll align our thermometer, label, and data value. Notice on the left, the project tree shows which components are selected. When editing, you can select components from this list or the workspace. Now that you have the idea, let's look at some additional features. Alarms provide visual and or audible notification that a data value has exceeded a defined limit. In this case, we'll have a variable that calculates the difference in temperature between the error and data logger. It's called delta T. When the difference in temperature is greater than three, we have an alarm condition. You can use any images you have. Many graphic file types are supported. RTMC includes images as well. Select one to be displayed when the condition is met and when it is not. There are a lot to choose from or use your own. Next, we'll add a chart to display historic data. Our other components, thermometer and digital display, give us data from a single point in time. The public and status tables work well as data sources for those types of components. To show some history of your data, you'll want to pull from a stored data table. The chart itself has properties. The Series tab is where you select the data source to be displayed. This time we'll display data from a stored data table, not the public table. Here you pick your mins, maxes, averages, etc. Click the Add button to add additional traces the same way. Now it's time to test the project. Click the Save and Run lightning bolt. Test your project. Here we have an alarm condition. Closing the runtime screen brings you back to the development mode. Now we'll see how to use an expression. Let's display the air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit this time. Put your cursor in the data selection field and enter your expression to change from degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Use the Alt-248 for the degree symbol. Again, test your project. Expressions can include simple math, functions to manipulate strings, or more complex functions that deal with the state of a data value over time. The RTMC Help has an extensive section on using expressions. Let's take a look at another RTMC project that shows some of the features I haven't demonstrated. This project displays data from two stations on different tabs. Because the data is similar, I simply duplicated the screen and made minor edits from there. We also see using a gauge and compass for wind data and an image behind some of the components. The time of the last data collection provides valuable information as well. The screens we saw at the beginning of this tutorial make good use of background images and color. Look for the background image selection tool in RTMC's screen menu. Here's a troubleshooting tip. If you see an exclamation point in a red box at the upper right of a component, then there's a problem with a linked data value. The main cause of this is that the scheduled data collection is not running. In this case, you can see in the lower right that the LogerNet server is disconnected. In development mode, hovering your mouse pointer over the box for a few seconds will display a pop-up hint about the error RTMC has detected. Look for another video tutorial on the additional features of RTMC Pro. Please contact a Campbell Scientific Application Engineer to discuss your application and for answers about RTMC, real-time monitoring and control. I'll leave you with some images from RTMC Pro screens.